kidnap, robbery, hit and run raids, and the sabotage of oil pipelines, just some of the methods used by MEND fighters, the movement for the emancipation of the Niger Delta, the umbrella organization demanding a greater share of Nigeria's oil revenues. Their aim is to stop foreign oil companies pumping oil out of Nigeria until their grievances are addressed. For the past three years, they have wreaked havoc on the petroleum industry in Nigeria, Africa's biggest oil exporter. At the height of the violence, cutting production from 2.5 million barrels a day to 1.5 million. They say they are fighting for a greater share of oil wealth for the ordinary people of the Delta, many of whom live in poverty. But their fight has created widespread insecurity and driven away foreign investors, forcing the Nigerian government to figure out a roadmap for peace. In August, the government offered former men fighters amnesty. 15,000 men like these renounced violence and gave up their arms, putting the Niger Delta on the road to peace, so the Nigerian government says. But there are still thousands, thousands, thousands and thousands of people who are in there who are prepared to fight this minute. Thousands of people who are prepared to continue fighting now. Thousands who are not even prepared to give a, 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 a dialogue any, a, a chance. The Nigerian government says 15,000 fighters in the Niger Delta have renounced militancy and handed over their weapons, a number Henry Oka dismisses. Most of those who have come out who the government declares, most of the 15,000 or so declared by the Nigerian government, in my opinion, are rented crowd. And uh, I, don't, uh, I don't think, in my, in my own opinion, I think uh, maybe like 500, 500 real fighters may have participated in this amnesty program. What about some of the guns that we've seen paraded on television that the government says has come from militants? government knows that's not true. There are thousands of weapons, thousands, much more than were supposedly removed from Delta. There are thousands more. Oka was held for nearly three years in prison for allegedly arming fighters in Nigeria's oil-producing states, but was never convicted. I don't look, like, look at it like I'm contributing to the violence. I'm participating in a fight for my right. You understand? Are you involved in funding militancy? Are you involved in providing weapons to militants? I don't have such funds. But in any way I can be of assistance, I will assist. Are you repentant? Oh, no, I'm not. Why should I be? Why should I be? The culture and despite Friday, serving time in prison, Oka says he will support fighters who attack and sabotage oil installations if peace efforts fail. The oil companies are on our land. If somebody comes on our land without our consent, it is our problem, that's our business, to get rid of them. If somebody takes control of your house or your car, what you want is your house or your car back from him. And that's it, you know. What we want from these oil companies is our land. You know? And then they can sort it out with the Nigerian government who, who, who permitted them to, to be on our lands against our wills. And, do you say, and I mean, he has this warning about the threat of a resumption in violence. The threat is real, you know, and, uh, and uh, I think, you know, in a few months, if the government doesn't start addressing the real demands of the people of Niger Delta, the government doesn't start speaking to the right people and addressing the real problems, there will be a resumption in violence very soon.